Okay, and for Indo Squall, the way to destroy it, lots of the research they do is using high, temp high temperature, high pressure, long time cooking, also use radiation, all those UV lights, all those type of uh, new, uh, we call them a new technology or non thermal new technology, they could be de uh, destroyed. Lots of the thing happened is actually the new powder. All those low, um, low water activity, uh, low, water, uh, low water activity groups, okay? So that's all we have for this session. Today we're gonna be, okay, uh, by the way, I just wanna mention here. So what I put here, if you see, this is the one last year when I do a Zoom link video. So I wrote everything. That's on the three video. You can go back to watch. This is what we just happened in the in the lecture. Okay, so I will take the recording. And this is also the lecture four. We do a, a zone recording, and this is a classroom recording. So I put both of them in there. If you miss something, you can go back to watch. And also there is certain like thirty percent of the people who likes to watch video, then it's okay. I mean, some of the person like to study by themselves in the dorm, so that, that's okay, I don't mind it. I mean, as long as you study, okay? Uh, lecture four, we're gonna talk about microbial growth, the factors to impact microbial growth, and if we talk about nutrition, we will folks talk about the bacterial medium. Okay, so there's a lot of information here. First of all, Bacteria grow is we call it a binary fission. Binary fission is very simple. It's one become two, two become four, four become eight. Okay, so this is called binary fission. Yes, one become two, two become four, four become eight. So two times n. Okay, that's called the binary fission. So you can see a simple cell division, the cell elongation, they will be formed across cell wall, and the same DNA will be duplicates, and uh, then they separate into the same daughter cell, that's supposed to be exactly the same. And finally the cell separate, becomes the daughter cell. And you should know, ideally, these two daughter cells compared to the mother cell could be, should be exactly the same, and the genetic information should also be exactly the same, but why always there's something different? Because of the mutation, okay? So that's some concept you need to know. So the first thing, bacteria generate a daughter cell is binary fission two times n, okay? Okay, this you should know, plus one. One equals two. Three equals three equals four. Three equals eight. Now the next concept is generation time. And I mentioned this a um, little bit when we talk about group translocation. And I said why group translocation is important for bacteria, here tells you. And you can see an E. coli doubling time is only 18 to 20 minutes. And usually, 24 hours later, the E. coli cell will die. So during that short period of time, they need to use energy efficiency. That's why they use group translocation. So here comes what's the generation time. The time required for a population to double in number. One become two, two become four, four become eight. That's called the generation time. And I just said for E. coli, it's very short, 18 to 20 minutes. For mycobacterial tuberculosis, is very long, is 12 to 24 hours. Remember, this is the only doubling time. So think about if somebody has bacteria, got TB, finally we have to identify this person has mycobacterial tuberculosis, which means we isolate it from the sputum sample. We confirm it, it's gonna take a longer time. Because one day is only one cell become two. Is that right? You can do the calculation, might be three weeks or months. And usually this sample we need to send to reference lab. In this area, I think in Lexington, uh, Kentucky, in a little bit of south is in Atlanta, Georgia. 
The reference lab will do a final identification. But during this time around, we cannot be let the patient wait. Or just say, okay, wait there. And the way that waits the confirmation, then we give you treatment. No, we cannot do that. That's why we do acid fast scan to do a pre-assumptive confirmation. If the acid fast test positive, we need to give the patient antibiotics immediately. Okay, so here is tells you the generation time is variable between the bacteria. E. coli is very short. Microbacterial tuberculosis is very long. Okay, this is the one, is how you gonna calculate the generation time. Okay, um, how you gonna calculate the generation time? This is basically the NT. N multiplied by two times N. Okay, now this is a, is a formula. This T is a specific time. After, I would say after specific time, this n is the original number, and this n is, uh, I would say, how many a generation? Generation number. How many generations? Okay. So this is a ori original. Now what we do? If we Put a log there. And that equals. Here, then you multiply this by the t, by the time. Then you get k. What is a k? Gross rate constant. Okay, you get a gross rate constant right here. Then the n t equals two n. Then you can follow in the form formula here. Okay. Then at the end of the day is g equals one divided by k. Generation time is a reciprocal number of the uh, gross rate. Okay, k is a gross rate. You don't have to understand all these things. Uh, it's completely mass. This is important. Okay, this is tells you how to get it. And I don't know how good you are. These are we teach in China back 20 years ago. Maybe 25 years ago, we teach in high school. You might be learning in your, like, like um, uh, sophomore, might be freshman, math classes in the United States. So I don't know how good you are. So we, I just briefly mentioned here. And you only need to know is the conclusion, okay? We're not going to test the math, it's too, too, compli too complicated. And all kinds of quiz and the puzzle could be impact this kind of thing. So I will mention log again because we're using log to measure the bacteria. I will mention it again in the lab. You only need to know the conclusion. 
if you can read the small here, you can read it. But if you never learned about these log maps, then you don't you don't have to remember all these. Um, you only need to know is the conclusion right here. Generation time is one divided by the growth rate. Okay. Next one is important. This is what I want to mention is a bacterial growth curve. This is the key for a general microbiology class. After this lab, after this class, I said you need to know gram stand, you need to know microscope use. You definitely need to know the bacteria cell growth curve. First of all, you need to know this is a standard bacteria grow in uh, a, 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 let's say tropic tropic soil growth. Let's say standard, which means like 35 degrees Celsius, about 24 hours. Not those uh, a bench or a poor nutrition environments. And I'll explain to you, if you have an antimicrobials, it's going to be different. So the standard, you need to know, it is absolutely not this, not like a linear curve. Okay, it's not going to be bacteria, just be very simple to grow like that. They have a very special curve. Now, we draw it, so x-axis is time. Usually it's an hour or minute, it depends. Y-axis is the bacteria population. Population, most of the time, we call it log 10 CFU per ml. We will mention again colony forming unit per ml using log 10 as a measurement. Well, well, I will mention this next week in the lab. Okay. Now, what is going to be the growth curve looks like? This is a standard growth curve. At the beginning, we call it lag time. I will say this is a preparation, which means bacteria in the new environment, their DNA, RNA, their cell needs to be settled up, needs to, a, a customer to the new environment needs to get the nutrition, absorb the nutrition. So this time of period is going to be longer sometimes, sometimes short, but they do have a time period which is no growth at all. But does not mean the bacteria not existing. It's just no growth. After this period of time, the bacteria start to grow dramatically. This is called the long time. It's very steep, a long time. They grow dramatically. This is usually happens when they come to Two become four, become six, finally become maybe become a hundred. The growth dramatic. Then in the bacteria medium, bacteria generate, they are going through biochemistry reaction. They take the taking the new nutrition, take out of the waste. Okay, the same as the human being, but the waste. At that stage, they are waste. He calls nutrients. Therefore, the bacteria start to grow. All, all the new nutrients in a gross media has been used up. Therefore, they go through a very flat curve called the stationary phase. Okay, then later on. At this stage, the waste starts to accumulate. No more nutrition can be used. Most of this waste, what do I say, is a toxication chemical for bacteria. It's like H2O2, like O3, or other chemicals. Then they start to accumulate. This waste is more than nutrients. 
Therefore, the bacterial numbers start to decrease. We call it stair space. Okay? This is the standard curve. Now I want to mention. First of all, even if you didn't take a microbiology class before, you know how do we know a bacteria is growing there? If we have a broth medium, we see it's become turbidity or become cloudy. We will say, there's a bacteria growing there. Everybody knows. Mm, you have a bottle of water. Okay, let's say an energy drink you bought from somewhere. You take it out, you see it's become cloudy and turbidity. That's not good. There's a bacteria growing there. Sometimes a bacteria already goes through these four phases. So at the end of the day, the best phase and the stationary phase or the end of the log phase, it may look <coughs> like the turbidity is similar. So the turbidity can only use to quantitative or qualitative to identify the bacteria present and existing, but not, cannot use this to judge whether the bacteria is survived or, or dead already. Okay, so be careful about the cloudy and turbidity. This is the first one. Second, I want to mention, we're going to mention later on. You have all sometimes heard about, we're going to inhibit a bacterial growth. Sometimes we say we're going to kill bacteria. So what means inhibit? When you buy a hot dog, if you look at the hot dog bag, you see like sodium diacetate, lactic acid, those are antimicrobials. Those antimicrobials is not for killing bacteria. They are for inhibitor bacteria. What that means? Which means the lag time will be extended. That's why most of the food products, there is an expiration time, or we say shelf lifetime. You're not going to eat the hot dog like one year later, put it, even put it in the refrigerator. Because during that period of time, the bacteria is inhibited, which means they all stay at lag phase period. They do not start to grow. But eventually, if they passing the expiration time, they still going to grow. Okay? They may be grow not as much as without antimicrobials. That we say it's inhibitor bacteria. But how about what means Q bacteria? Okay, you have a diarrhea. You go to see a doctor. The doctor gives you some antibiotics. This second day or third, you will feel better. What that means? This means you're killing bacteria. The bacteria did not stop to grow further. So their lag phase time is decreased like this. That's why we say it's killing bacteria. Okay? This is because static. And this is because cyber. That's a terminology. But we will mention this later on. This is give you something, although I'm not teach for the microbiology lecture, but I want to let you know that whenever you heard about said inhibitor bacteria, that means antimicrobials will be extend the lag phase time, but the bacteria is there. There is a standard for most of the, of the pathogens is below the level. <coughs> The exception is E. coli over 5-7-H7. That has to be zero tolerance and the ground disease. Because otherwise you get hemorrhagic uremic syndrome. That's what we're going to mention later on. But here I just want to share with you the idea of what means inhibit? Extend the lag phase, but the bacteria is still there. What means killing? The lag phase stopped from there, not even started the growth time. Okay? So that's a phase of the microbial growth. This slide, which is talk about something relatively new, this is talk about viable but non-culturable. Uh, most of these bacteria need to use molecular methods to do the detection. What is viable or non-culturable? Which means the bacteria cell is there. They still will cause toxication. If you eat it, you still get trouble. However, we use bacterial media, we cannot grow them. 
which means we cannot use strip plating or grow them in the media to grow it. We can only use the molecular masses to test the presence. That's called viable but non culturable. And sometimes it happens. The second concept, um, you know why we, we will get cancer? Because of the programming cell death. In our body, our cell is programmed to death. But if the programming has the problem, it's go the other way, have the tumor, then become a cancer. Okay? For bacteria, it's the same thing. They have a program to sell this, and then we call it commit, could commit suicide for the bacteria. These are just the two CRA. Besides, we talk about this death space. So why bacteria will be dying? The basic idea here is that uh, waste is more than the nutrients, but it also, it, it also could be viable but non culturable and it also, also could be a program to sell this. Okay, these are something um, Besides that, okay. Next, we want to mention the factors affect the bacterial growth. So we talk about the pH, temperature, water activity, and of, of oxygen concentration. So we want to mention these one by one. Um, these are the uh, materials. Some of them we will test in the lab for the factors if the bacterial microorganism growth. First of all is pH. So very simple, what is pH? Minus log proton concentration in the median. Is that right? Same as a human being, bacteria usually like the pH around the six to seven, which is neutral. Okay, they like the neutral pH. So when we make a medium, if you measure pH, the pH is 6 to 7. That's for most of the bacteria is optimal growth. If the bacteria is a pH less than 4 or 5, bacteria will, will die. Okay, I would say die, not grow. However, fungi will survive. May not grow, but may survive. Okay, so remember, acid is one of the methods to control bacteria. So you can see, below 4.0 restriction for most of the pathogens, for eastern modes, even below 5.0, they're still gonna survive, but most of the bacteria is a gross, um, optimal growth is pH 7. Now based on the pH requirements, Bacteria, or we say microorganism, could be categorized into acidophile, neutrophile, and uh, alkali file. Acidophile, most of them are fungi. pH 0 to 5.5. 5. 